We are all the Goblin Army. Now we go learn to paint. Welcome Reaper fans! Today we have a titan of a miniature. This is the Ancient Dragon from Reaper Miniatures. This is from the Bones Black. It is absolutely huge. Um, I'm adding this onto a square base this time. This is an MDF 6mm uh, uh, thick base and it's 150mm uh, by 150mm and I'll do some clay work on that in a moment. Um, let me give you a 360 of the miniature. It's a beast, absolutely huge. There you go, look at this. Absolutely massive. It's not going to be a difficult paint because it's so large. These will all be the one colour. And we'll probably do some wet blending on the wing. I can't even spin it around on my table. There we go. There we go. There. Right, to begin with, we've got a bit of prep work to do. So I will show you what needs doing. And you've probably all noticed that um, the wings on the dragon, um, if you have this dragon from the Bones Kickstarter, is they've got little mold holes from the moulding process. So I'm going to fill these in first and I'll show you how I do that. So let's get started. Okay, so I've got the wings here. And as you can see, and on a close up, you can see there's a nasty little mark there where it was connected for the mould process. So we don't want these to be seen on our miniature. So what I've got is I use some plastic putty from Vileco. All you need is one of these little cotton buds and a little bit of water in a pot. It's very, very simple to fix. So all we do is we fill in the hole with our putty. Just like so. And then what we do is we dip the end of the cotton bud into the water, take off the excess, and then just slightly go over the hole. This will smooth out the area, and once it's dry, it shouldn't show. Just like so. And that's all we need to do. Once that's dry, I'll come back. For the texture on the base today, I'm going for some little gravelly stones. These are from the beaches in Orkney. And I'm gonna add these to my base with some PVA glue. Now, what I use to with my PVA glue is the old blister packs. So everything gets used, there's no wastage. So you get the old blister pack and I've got my PVA glue here. And I just put the PVA glue in. And it's a great way of using up and not wasting any materials and getting the job done. So all what I do is I add the PVA glue to the base of the mini. Nice and thickly. going right up to the edges of the actual base. Make sure you've got plenty of glue as the MDF will soak the glue into itself. So a nice thick coverage of the PVA glue will help the stone stick because these stones are a little bit larger than what I'd normally use but they'll work perfectly with this base. Mm -hmm. 
then all we do is say we add the stems. I'm going to make a mess now because I didn't put any paper down, but that's fine because I'll clear it up later. So we just put on the stems. Once the stones have dried and you have given them all a primer coat, it all just blends in beautifully with the rest of the miniature. Now, as these stones are a little bit heavier than the normal gravel that I'd use, I am not going to tip this over to tap off the excess stones. I will leave this dry exactly where it is. I'll go for a coffee and I'll come back and then I will tap off the excess. Because the stones are a little bit heavier, if I turn it over now, they probably will fall off. So we're going to wait and let the, pee, uh, the, the glue do its job. So the base is all done now. As you can see, all the gravel is dried on, the, on my primer coat and it looks fantastic. What I'll do now is I'll give all this a black ink wash and let that dry and then I'll be dry brushed and all the extras are added. Now for the ancient dragon as you can see I have um, given it a primer coat of white. This was from Army Painter from one of their rattle can primers and it has dried perfectly on the Bones Black miniature. So again it's really good that we can use these spray paints with the Bones Black miniatures because the miniatures are getting bigger and bigger it makes it so much easier to be able to spray your miniatures with a primer first. Most people, um, some, well should I say some people don't like using a primer they're quite happy to paint straight directly on the Bones miniatures which you can do the Bones White, the Bones Black you can paint directly onto the miniature without a primer but for my personal taste, I love to have a primer coat. It gives you something to work from and it really does help your painting. It really does. But each to their own. Okay, what I'll do is I will now um, choose a color. I think as it's an ancient dragon, it should be um, very dark. Like um, it could be a very, very old, dragon so um, I want an old feel to the dragon uh, you know grandpa dragon type of thing so I'm thinking we could go with a dark olive green um, some form of that I will have a think about it I will get my coat on that I'm going to use and I'll show you the colors once I come back well I decided on my colors so I've done all the blocking in now um, when you hear people talking about blocking in the colours on a miniature, that means you're just painting in all the areas that are the main areas on your miniature. This is without any shading or um, dry brushing or anything. So the blocking in is just covering your miniature with all the colours you want. Now, I went with MSP purples in the end. I was thinking of going for a green, but... Um, purple popped in my head so it purple it is so what we've got is some nice runic purple I've also got some MSP solid black which I've used for the horns and all the claws so I'll give you a little 360 um, it, I gave two coats of the runic purple onto the wings and it already looks very nice and the same with the body, I had to give two coats for the body. And I used a Styx purple for that one by MSP. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I will cover the whole miniature with black ink wash. Um, with the black ink wash it will bring out all the shades and go into all the recesses. And then once the ink wash is dry, and we can do our dry brushing like I showed you before on the scales, going up the scales, and we can highlight all the scales. With the wings, now I am going to cover the whole wings 
with a black ink wash and then I'm going to take the ink wash off using a rag. So when I get to that stage I'm going to show you that because these rings are so big um, it's an easy, it's a very easy way to give a lovely effect with minimal work. Um, but it does leave um, a very nice look to the wings and I'll show you that when I get to that. So what I'm going to do first is I'll cover the whole body in the ink wash and once I get to the wings I'll show you that process as I do it myself. Alright, the ink wash is dried on the main base of my body and like I said now I'm going to show you how I'll do the wings, back of the wings. Now I'm using an old bandana, this is just an old rag but what it is you're looking for any old rag that won't give off hairs. So this is one of my old bandanas from when I was a kid and there's a bit of a nutcase. <laughs> and with the bandanas, like I say, you can take away the paint without leaving any hairs because you don't want to leave any bits of dust and hairs on the miniature. So all we do is we got um, some nun oil, this black nun oil here, and we are going straight onto the miniature. And I'm just going to go heavily over the whole area. Stick that ink wash on there. Doesn't matter about you making a mess because all you're doing is getting the ink wash over this purple and we're going to use the rag to make our effect. This will make our lighting effect and the wings and give a sense of shading. I've got a bit of paper on the floor there to catch any drips so don't worry about that just make sure you don't do it on your mother's table make sure you've got paper down if you're doing it in the lounge or the kitchen table um, I was uh, unfortunate enough to ruin one of my mum's tables when I was a kid painting she was not a happy bunny <laughs> I learnt the hard way. Yes. So we're getting all this ink wash on. Okay, let's get this around so you can see a bit more. Such a big mini, it's hard to get any room. Okay. So all we do now is we're looking for the highest areas on the wings. So I'm taking my rag and I'm going along the areas like so. Follow that bony part. Just take off the excess paint. Same again. In the middle. So we're going for the highest parts, just like you was exactly like you're highlighting the skin by adding extra purple when it's dry. But because this miniature is so big, it actually works out easier and much faster to do it this way. So just take off the paint as you're going along. Again, going along the center of the wing in the highest areas, leaving all the ink in the recesses to give you that shade. Just take away the ink. And again on this last part, like so. So all you're doing is taking away the ink, leaving the ink in the recesses, and you'll have instant highlights on the wings so, but you're also getting to see all the details. So as you can see, you've got all the blacks going down the fingers, and it's you've got the higher areas then, which are lighter. And once that's dry, all you need to do is a tiny bit of dry brushing along the highest areas, just to pick out the highest parts of the wing. And I'm going to do that for the rest of the wings and 
that'll be done. What I'll do then is I'll come back and show you what's next. Okay, the wings are now dry. What I've done now is I have dry brushed over the top areas of the wings with the runic purple which I used to, to originally paint the wings with. And just adding a tiny, tiny drop of white to the runic purple just to highlight just the edges here and on the tops here. Now going into the rest of the miniature, I went over the dark purple scales with the lighter purple. Just a very light dry brush going up all the scales and the same with the chest scales. That's the runic purple and I've gone all the way up the scales. With the horns I used grey um, and that is just dry brushed on. Um, I will give that a little ink wash later just to blend it in a little bit better. So, so all I need to do now is the eyes and um, this will be about done. Now let me show you the base. There we go, there's the base. Now the base is just about done now. And what I've done with the base, I've added some flocking to the base. Um, I went over some nice greens around the base area and all over the rocks. Added some of these little plants which I purchased off eBay. Um, there's a couple of people that sell them on eBay. Quite cheap but they're really effective and they're great for your models. Um, I think it's about uh, five pounds for about 50 or 100 of these little bushes. And they're self adhesive so they just stick on. Um, and they're, they're, they work really well. So that's what I've been using. And so that's the base done. So all I'm going to do now is the eyes, finish off a little bit more of the dragon, and then I'll come back and show you the finished mini. So here is the finished ancient dragon. Absolutely beautiful. And it's all glued to the base now. The eyes are done. The eyes are just dragon white with a black mark. Um, the black is just halfway down the eye. You don't go straight all the way down to this one. I've gone for a round pupil and I've kept it to the top of the eye. So it's kind of looking quite angry. There we are. Absolutely fantastic and great fun to paint. So let me show you what's for next week. Next week we have the Obsidian Crypt. This is from Reaper Miniatures. Absolutely fantastic. Now I've painted one of these before and I made a huge diorama with my with my one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the basic setup and the basic paint of this miniature and then I'll show you at the end of next week's uh, show uh, what can be achieved when you have one of these. But I'm going to show you from start to finish how to paint the interior, the exterior and have a lovely crypt for your tabletop. So if you enjoy my channel then please subscribe. If you want to support the channel then please become a patron. All patrons are added to the end credits of all my videos. So until next time.